Thank you so much, uh, the chairperson, for this session. I'd like to start off by thanking the organizers of this uh, 16th Interministerial Conference and uh, also to thank the host country, Tunisia, for the wonderful hospitality that they have shown us. And uh, a thank you to all the member countries of uh, the PPD. As I've been introduced, um, I'm going to present the keynote session, keynote of, uh, on maternal health. And um, the chairperson has noted that this is a very important uh, issue that uh, PPD has prioritized, and uh, it's coming through a lot of discussions. So it's very important that um, we take note of the issues that as countries we are grappling with and see how we can be able to respond to the issues. And uh, what is maternal health? We all know that uh, maternal health is the health of women during pregnancy, childbirth, and uh, postpartum period. It uh, encompasses the healthcare dimensions of family planning, preconception, prenatal, and postnatal care in order to ensure a positive and fulfilling experience. And in most cases, reduce maternal morbidity and mortality. Uh, in many of our countries, uh, maternal health or the pregnancy experience is associated with negative outcomes. And this is something that um, as countries within this, uh, the PPD family, we need to start addressing. So um, as a result of the pregnancy and pregnancy-related complications, maternal death has been defined as uh, the death of a woman while pregnant or within 42 days of the termination of the pregnancy. And this is usually aggravated uh, by the lack of management within pregnancy or from accidental causes. It should be a joyful experience, but many times uh, the women lose their lives in Africa or in my country, it is known as a war. When a woman is going to give birth, they refer to it as uh, the woman has gone to war. Because many times they are the spoils of war, the women do not come back, and uh, the, even the infants die during the childbirth. So what are the key facts? Um, every day, 830 women approximately die from preventable causes, 830 deaths of women around the world. That means uh, every minute, at least two women are dying from around the world. And uh, how are these deaths being aggregated? Almost 99% of these deaths occur in developing countries, and those are the countries that are within this room. We have also noted that 78% um, of uh, live births are attended to by skilled professionals. This is a very small uh, percentage, and uh, why shouldn't it be 100%, one can ask. It has improved, there's been a great improvement in uh, attendance of uh, skilled healthcare, but um, we should aim at having 100%. And according to UNICEF, the world is not delivering quality maternal health care to the poorest mothers. These mothers and millions of them are at a risk of death, of um, having uh, other risks associated to pregnancy, like the fistulas due to the prohibitive health care costs. They lack access to services and skilled professionals. And this is also aggravated by child marriages. The mothers or the young girls who go into motherhood and uh, deliver when their bodies are not yet ready, develop other complications and uh, morbidity as well. And this has contributed to the high maternal mortality. So what is the lifetime risk of a woman during maternal death? This is very, very important. We need to um, talk about this within our countries. 
and uh, be able to devise solutions. In sub-Saharan Africa, for instance, the risk of a woman dying is one in 39 in sub-Saharan Africa. So imagine if you know 39 women, one of those women is going to die in childbirth. And I'm sure all of us here at least know 39 women within your family, within your circles of friendship. So that is very, very, uh, it's an alarming uh, statistic. Uh, when this is uh, aggregated, uh, averaged, within the uh, developing countries, it's a bit better, but not, not very good. It's one in 150 women. When you compare this to the developed world, where one in 3,800 women die, uh, you really see the inequality or the big, big difference. This does not mean that any woman should die in uh, childbirth or uh, the pregnancy-related uh, risks, but it is important that we address the issues and we note the disparities across the regions and see what we are not doing right as a region and uh, also learn from the different countries. So, um, as I earlier said, 99% of all deaths, maternal deaths, occur in developing countries, and more than half of those deaths occur in sub-Saharan Africa, while a third occurs in South Asia. Um, you, we have also learned, a uh, number of studies have established that half of the maternal deaths occur in uh, fragile and humanitarian settings. But also within the countries, there are large disparities uh, between high and low income, uh, women who have high and low incomes, and also disparities uh, for women living in rural versus urban areas. So in our respective countries, it is important for us to um, be able to analyze why these disparities are happening and uh, develop programs that can respond to the challenges of the women at the lower end, the ones in the rural and the ones uh, who are having uh, low income. The high maternal death rates in our respective countries are an indicator of inadequate healthcare systems, and this is a violation of women's fundamental rights to life, to health and self-determination. And um, there is a cost to this, of course. The world loses uh, about 15 billion US dollars lost in productivity when women die. And uh, yeah, when women die in childbirth and also pregnancy associated. So how can women's lives be saved? Women need access to antenatal care in pregnancy. This uh, should be emphasized, no doubt. They also need skilled care during childbirth and then also care and support in the weeks after childbirth. And uh, infections after childbirth can be eliminated if good hygiene is practiced and if the early signs uh, of infections are recognized early enough and treated in a timely manner. There is also the preeclampsia that occurs in many women when they are pregnant. This can be detected if it is detected early and appropriately managed, women's lives will be saved. So to avoid maternal deaths, it's also vital to prevent unwanted and too early pregnancies. I earlier alluded to the pregnancies uh, amongst uh, teenagers, and uh, it is very important that uh, we prevent the too early pregnancies, but also the unwanted pregnancies. All women, including adolescents, need access to contraception, and they need a full spectrum of reproductive health services and quality post-abortion care. So what is the call to action? We need to provide, as countries, affordable, high-quality maternal health services. We also need to have data. There is need to gather evidence on the number of deaths that are occurring within countries and what are the causes of those deaths? 
and how strong your health system is in uh, responding to the uh, maternal needs, but also what are the human resources in place. The countries should design costed national plans for maternal and newborn health. I know many countries um, in this room have uh, designed costed uh, plans for family planning, but how many have national plans for maternal health and newborn health that are costed? There is also need for comprehensive uh, emergency obstetric care services, and uh, we cannot um, overemphasize the need to educate the girl child. We need to educate women and girls to empower them in decision making, but also to provide them with knowledge in nutrition, in hygiene, and positive health seeking behavior, and the av availability of family planning services is also important. Uh, statistics show that um, when the contraceptive uh, prevalence rate is high, maternal mortality is down. And uh, according to that chart, you can see that the countries with uh, high modern contraceptive prevalence rate really have the lowest uh, maternal mortality rate. And um, according to this, uh, family planning reduces maternal deaths by up to 40%. This is a solution at our hands that we can um, readily take on. As I conclude, I beg to draw your attention to other aspects of women's health. When you speak maternal health, many times you're thinking of pregnancy related, but there are other aspects. And uh, when people define health, uh, it is uh, defined as uh, being free from illness or injury. But when it comes to maternal health, it has, it's tagged to pregnancy. So we need to also look at the other side of the coin and uh, see what are the other issues that affect mothers. And um, there are other diseases uh, that are killing women in developing countries. According to the World Health Organization data, more than 430,000 women aged 15 to 59 die each day of breast cancer, cervical cancer, and diabetes. And these are things that we need to also uh, draw our attention to. Um, Chairperson, I beg to conclude. And thank you so much. Thank you for your attention.